So Ben, welcome to this episode of the Family Business Voice. We're so glad to have you here with us. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, very cool. It's uh, it's wonderful to have you here. You're the fourth generation, is that correct, of your family business? Yeah, so I'm fourth generation. Um, it all started back in the 1930s um, when my great-grandparents were uh, one of the original people that took the government, the British government, up on a scheme where through the 1930s, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it was called the Great Depression in the UK. We had a lot of um, shipbuilders, a lot of miners out of work, a lot of high unemployment. And what the government did is set up over 20 areas around the UK where unemployed families would go and work and farm the land. Mm. My great grandparents were one of the original families that sort of signed on the dotted line, put their hand up and went and worked on the land. And that was started in 1936. They were one of the original families that took the government up on this scheme. And then my granddad joined them after World War II. He met my nan, who was a Pompey girl, Pompey Portsmouth girl, um, (laughs) and had my sort of dad, uncles and aunties uh, on this land settlement, the government scheme. And then we moved to Warburton near Chichester, um, where I live today in 1957. So as a family sort of business, we've been going since 1936. And where I live today on the flower nursery, we've been here since 1957. So that's sort of a brief, um, a brief history. And originally, we, we used to grow um, like salad crops, like lettuces, cucumbers, tomatoes, um, we had cattle, sheep, chickens, all sorts of things. And then the birth of the supermarkets in the 60s and 70s here in the UK, uh, the British public got very used to having things all year round. So instead of having, I don't know, strawberries just in the summer, they mm. could get strawberries for Christmas and blueberries for Christmas. So there was a lot of uh, cheap imports going around and uh, no longer was it sustainable uh, to grow lots of different things on your plot of land. So in the 70s, my granddad experimented with the British Ulstromeria, the flower that we grow, and we've been growing it ever since, since sort of the the mid late seventies, and then slowly but surely the whole the whole nursery, the whole farm, as you know, it sort of came over to growing and specialising in that one type of flower. So that's sort of the brief history of it all, really. What is it that you're currently excited about as a family business in terms of like you know new technologies that are helping you? Uh, be more efficient in your greenhouses? Like, is there anything that you are currently really looking to invest into or that you have invested into to, you know, increase your f- efficiency or even further uh, further sustainability even more, which I know yeah. is a big agenda for you? Yes. Yeah, so it's all about sustainability with me. So um, basically, we grow our flowers in big greenhouses, which are, are heated, and they used to be heated by oil. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, now we heat the greenhouses using biomass fuel and that biomass is made up of um, we've got a lot of forestry a lot of woodland around where we are and that's basically made up of of local woodland local forestry um, commissioned wood and we get that from five minutes down the road so instead of burning oil we're burning wood that has to be uh, managed and we're, we're using that. So instead of our heating being about 60% efficient, it's about 90% efficient. Mm. Um, also, a lot of um, florists and people that buy our flowers locally that come in, that come on into the flower nursery, we always ask them, do you need them packaged or can you just take them as a raw product? And we do a lot of that now and a lot of florists locally um they come back to the nursery once or twice a month to give me back the packaging so mm. our packaging is recyclable but we also reuse a lot of packaging as well um, so i think with the biomass and the packaging and also we use very very we hardly use any pesticides or insecticides anymore we do a lot of biocontrol so we use other insects to kill the Mm-hmm. the annoying insects that we don't want so mm-hmm. for example we use um an insect called incarsia to kill off white fly um, mm-hmm. and we use um a spider mite called phytocelis to kill off the two spotted spider mite that we don't like so um we're always finding sort of biocontrol ways of um of eradicating pests from the greenhouse as well so um 
you know, we're, we're always um, we're always doing the best we can for sustainability. But I'd say those three sort of the heat, how we heat, how we package or not package the flowers and how we um, control pests in the greenhouses. It's all done a lot more sustainably now. How important do you think it is to the customers? And do you think that the next generation, so like, you know, millennials, Gen Z, et cetera, do you, do you feel like all of that you're building now is going to lead to a competitive advantage with that new customer base that's growing up now? I'd like to think so, yeah, because hopefully that's why people are buying my flowers because they could get the cheaper foreign stuff, but they want a bit of traceability. They know my flowers are going to have a bigger bud, a more vibrant flower head. They know they're going to last longer. They know it hasn't taken five weeks to get from Cambodia into Holland. Holland's a great Yarmouth in the UK, then to a middleman, then into mm -hmm. their house. You know, it, it's coming direct or or through a florist straight straight into their home. And if they've got a problem or they want me to answer any questions, they can message me on Twitter or Instagram, mm -hmm. and I can give them a video to show how I'm doing things or um, you know, you wouldn't get that, you know, if you bought some flowers from a supermarket mm -hmm. and they didn't last very well and you emailed that supermarket, you'd have, you wouldn't probably need a response. <laughs> no. no. Whereas people buying off of me directly or, or indirectly through a florist, um, <clears throat> you know, they can go, oh, these were grown by Ben. Oh, here's Ulstromere Ben on Instagram. This is what he does. And this is how he does it. And, you know, it's more bang for their buck. Not only are they actually having the flowers in their home, but they can see how they're grown. And mm -hmm. especially with our businesses, our, I mean, our customer service, I don't think we could do any better, you know, because, yes, I could employ a customer service person, but I couldn't because I don't have the money to do that. So but not only do I obviously have to grow and market and, and do that, but it's also customer service is, is vital. So if the flowers haven't turned up, I need to track it down and give it to them or send out another batch for free so they get fresh stuff or answer any questions and, you know, explain if, if, yeah. if we don't have that color because of nature, because it's been bad weather, we've got another color you can have. And it's all about that sort of understanding, you know, your customer and me is it's that relationship so it's um which you just wouldn't you you just wouldn't get that personal service from a a massive a massive company you know do you think that level of service now gets associated with the fact that you are a family business because you say it very clearly in your everywhere where there's a description of your business of crosslands flower nursery you say very clearly we're a family business for family owned since since 1936 so big point of pride do you feel that is a big attraction point for the customers as well and do you feel that they associate this level of service with the fact that you're family owned and family managed yeah and i think it's uh, consistency and quality of products as well mm. um because yes i am young for a grower but i've got all the heritage and all the information behind me you can't go to school and learn what I know it'd be impossible it's just so unique you know British Ulstrom area you know there's not a degree in that or anything it's just <laughs> what it's what you you're born with and what you grow up with so we're very proud because we know what we do is the best and we we're specialists in what we do and um as I say um we're, we're always sort of learning and and developing but we're specialists at what we do and we're proud at what we do and I think people sort of respect that you know um they don't mind paying a bit extra for something that is that is of quality and they can see the difference between our flowers and the rest mm -hmm.